everyone, welcome to my channel. If you've never seen me before, hi, my name is Sarah. I am a pre-nursing student and a CNA student. That was my first time introducing myself like that, like I had to. Um, I'm a pre-nursing student and a CNA student who is taking the ATITs in about one week and um, applying to nursing school for the second time now. Yeah, um, this particular nursing school that I am applying to, it's a community college near where I live. They make us take the T's every application cycle. And since this is my second application cycle, I am retaking the T's, which I'm not excited about. Um, I did procrastinate just a little bit. Um, and so I'm making this video to help people in my situation ace the T's with one week to study. So, um, I did want to get it out of the way that if you have more than a week to study, you should watch one of my other videos. You'll probably find that more helpful than this one. Cause this is really just for people who are in a pinch, have a few days to study, need to just figure out how to get it together in a short amount of time. So with those people out of the way, <laughs> hello procrastinators, how are you? I am going to bring you along with how to study for the HITs in one week. Um, first, I'm going to just do an overall breakdown of my strategy of, you know, how to make sure we don't go crazy um, how to make sure we stay confident in our abilities and our skills. And, um, then I will do a little breakdown of each of the sections, things that are probably worth studying, things that may not be worth studying as you're prioritizing things. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Okay. So, um, basically what I recommend is to get yourself an ATI practice test. Um, I got two and I just got the study package. I got this months ago, guys. I got the study package that has um, the book, comes with the book, um, the two practice tests, and like the online tutoring thing. Um, you might want to get the package if you think it's going to be worth it. If you only have a week, it might not be. Uh, <laughs> just because you may not have time. But basically, if you are new to the way that the ATI thing works, um, I don't know exactly what it was called. I think it was called like the smart tutoring thing or something, but basically it's what my strategy was from the jump, which was take a practice test and study your weaknesses. Um, depending on how much time you have, maybe you have a full week, then you can probably do a lot more, um, depending on how many hours per day you have. If you only have like a few days or a day or two, I would just literally do anything you can. <laughs> anything will help. Um, so what I'm doing, I took a practice test and I am using this book um, to fill in the gaps, basically. My weaknesses um, for this particular practice test that I took uh, was math, believe it or not, because I made a lot of silly mistakes. Um, and then my second weakest was, I'm just using myself as an example. My second week weakest was... English, surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> so I'm just using myself as, as an example. So I took a practice test and I'm going to focus on the aspects of the reading, reading of the English practice test that I got wrong. Um, this way I will fill in the gaps and kind of bring myself up to speed with where I should be. I really didn't do bad on my practice test, but it's a good thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so basically what I'm trying to say is step one, is to get yourself a practice test. Step two, take said practice test. And then step three, study the things you got wrong. The reason why I suggest the ATI practice test specifically is because when you're done, I'll just show you what the computer looks like. Um, when you're done, you will see your score. I'm just ignore my ring light for a second, sorry. You'll see your score at the top and then I'll just minimize all these you'll see your individual like sub scores. These are mine for this practice test that I took. I don't know if you can see. Um, I got an 89.7 for reading, 79.4 for math, yikes. Uh, sorry, 86.4 for science and 84.8 for uh, English. Um, and then when you're done, you can maximize each of these items and then it will literally show you the exact sections in the book that cover the material that you got wrong. So I think that's super helpful for last minute studiers like me who are really scrambling and need to prioritize what we're studying. I think that is a super helpful strategy um, to 
improving your score and doing better on the T's. For the science section specifically, I recommend, um, or even for the math section, if you just, if you're just one of those people like me who have a hard time teaching yourself from a book and a video would help a lot more, I would recommend Smart Edition Academy's ATIT7 online course. It's basically like videos and they do have a book as well, but I find their videos like super, super, super helpful. And I do have an affiliate link down below that you can use. It doesn't cost anything extra for you, but it does help my channel. Um, so if you do want to purchase a Smart Edition ATIT7 online course, um, you can help me buy my nursing school textbooks and use the link below. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to get that out of the way because I, I will be back bouncing back and forth between ATI and Smart Edition for the science section with things that I need to like look over. Um, so yeah, so that is just like an overview of the general strategy, how I think the best way to approach studying with such a condensed timeline is. And so for each of the individual sections, I'm just going to be going over a few of the things that I'm keeping in mind as I'm studying to better just like use my time to, you know, study what I need to study. Um, so for the reading section, I have picked up along the way that I think, I think my things were make inferences and draw conclusions about a text purpose and meaning. So making logical, logical conclusions. Um, something that helped me with figuring out how to do this, you kind of, when looking at your answer choices, you, you kind of have to avoid like jumping to the conclusion yourself based off of the text and solely going off of what the text says. If one of the answer choices is supported by what the text says directly, that's probably your right answer. If you have to like make inferences yourself, that may not be the best one. If it's talking about a logical conclusion, talking about inference, something else, that is something else entirely. Like I just <laughs> can't help you there. But logical conclusions based on what the text says, um, it's probably going to be something like that. However, when being asked about um, like which sentence summarizes the passage the best, your answer probably isn't going to match one of the sentences. If your answer choice too closely matches one of the sentences in the passage, the choice is probably a supporting detail and not a summary. <laughs> so just know that. I'm it's, I'm sure it's common knowledge to some of you, but for me it wasn't <laughs> when I was sitting. And so that was something like I actually like learned as I was studying for this test. Um, so that might be helpful for some people. I don't know. Um, so then for the math section, I wouldn't necessarily go out memorizing every single conversion, every single formula, because they do give you some formulas and conversions. Um, but just to be safe, I would memorize the area of a circle. I would memorize the area of a trapezoid, triangle, those sort of things. Um, I would memorize the conversions for feet to yards if you don't already know inches to feet um what else pounds to kilogram or pounds to kilograms um what is the other one i'm thinking of oh ounces to pounds just simple conversions like that i would memorize um if you have extra time you could definitely do the metric system with milliliters to liters kiloliters to whatever. Um, for me, that could just comes easy because everything's just based off of 10. But if you don't, if you don't know that and you have extra time, it probably wouldn't hurt, but I wouldn't necessarily memorize like inches to miles. For example, you probably don't need to know that. <laughs> um, hopefully you don't need to know that if you're in a pinch. Um, if you have extra time to study, go for it. But, um, you know, um, they, I do, I did notice that when I was taking my practice test for the ATIT7 that they did give me like formulas for volume, um, formulas for, uh, what is the one I'm thinking of? I think I was thinking of volume actually. They might've given me a surface area volume. Um, I think they gave me volume of a sphere. Like I was like, okay, perfect. I don't have to memorize this. So certain things they will give you, um, but I would just, just be prepared um, to memorize certain things. Um, so, oh, and also, um, if you don't 
understand the concept of like proportions, memorize that. But this also falls into the general umbrella of mem like work on the things that you were weaker at within a particular subject. Rather than being like, oh, math is my weakest subject. I'll just study every math concept. Just study the certain math concepts that you got wrong. <laughs> if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so then for the science, this to me is where like a video would come in. Um, and I guess for math too, but this was, this would be for me where a video came in. Like if, for example, biology or chemistry wasn't my strong suit, I would be looking to watch videos on that. Just because for me, that's like the quickest way to learn something is watching maybe like a 10, 20 minute video, you know, I feel like that just like that. That's what makes sense to me. If you're fine sitting from a book, go for it. Um, this is where I would watch the smart edition videos, um, especially if it was something for anatomy and physiology. I was blessed to take anatomy and physiology this time around. So I pretty much I feel like if I'm looking at my science stuff, I only really had to do. Let's see, the thing that I got wrong was biology that part I the, the anatomy I answered 90% correctly so like th that for example would not be an area that I would study um but for me when I'm looking at it and this is another reason why I'm taking ATI practice test I'll just show you like close up and maybe I'll insert a screenshot just so you can see a little bit better but they will show you percentage wise what you answered correctly so not only would I know the topics I would know I would be able to prioritize the topics that I got wrong. So like, even though it says describe the anatomy and physiology of the cardiovascular system and the nervous system, I know that that's only 10% of the questions I got wrong. And, you know, maybe 25%, closer to 25% would be represented by Mendel's um, laws of inheritance and cell structure function and organization. So I would know to hone in on that over anatomy. Hopefully this is giving context <laughs> like and making more sense as we're going along. Um, so yeah, and then for the English section, for me personally, this is just my opinion. Obviously, if it doesn't work for you, do your own thing. Um, I would definitely understand um, just basic spelling rules if spelling isn't your thing. Instead of trying to memorize all of the words, <laughs> right instead of going and looking up like commonly misspelled words and just memorizing all of them that's definitely an approach you could do however I think just memorizing the spelling rules and maybe just a few of the exceptions might be more beneficial to you um if punctuation isn't your thing maybe looking up a video reading about it just understanding when to use a comma when to use a semicolon when to use a colon how to use quotation marks, what punctuation goes where when using quotation marks, um, and then verb root, like word roots. Um, something that was super helpful for, to me that I, I picked up on and I guess was able to articulate when I was taking my practice test. Um, and I don't know, again, if this is going to be helpful to some of you, but it might be. I don't know. Um, I have, I noticed a few times I would get a fill in the blank kind of a situation. And it was like a multiple choice, but it was like fill in the blank. And it was a sentence and it would be like, I don't know, the the town residents said that tourism blank better at night or something. And the the so it was okay so basically <laughs> that was really confusing so basically what i'm trying to say is when looking at different uh forms of verbs different tenses of verbs pay attention to your to the other pay attention to what the other verbs tenses are when choosing your answer because most likely the tenses are going to agree they're going to be the same right so if it was like the townspeople said that tourism blank better your answer choice could be like did has done will do you know it's probably going to be did like because the clue was 
said, like the townspeople said that tourism did better at night or something. Um, so that was just something that I would, cause I would, my brain would be like, oh, tourism does better at night or tourism has done better at night or something. It's probably did because the tenses should agree. So that was just something that like blew my mind <laughs> that I like knew because English, I don't know if you guys have seen my other video, my past videos, but English has been my weakest subject like since the jump. Um, so making a little breakthrough is so exciting. So <laughs> when you understand something, you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I feel like I needed to share with you. Um, that was a little breakdown of each of the sections. And if you are stressed out setting for the teas, please don't um, because you most likely will do fine. And even if you don't do fine, you can apply next year or apply to a school that doesn't need this test because there are actually quite a few. Um, a four year school that I was looking at doesn't require this test. It's freaking wild. I'm, like one of the four year schools I was looking at does. My community college does, but one of the other four year schools I was like really tempted to be like, should I just not take this test at all? But just know that you do have options. Probably, hopefully you have options. Um, whether it's pursuing an LPN first, and then an RN, you know, retaking it, if your school lets you retake it, I don't really have the time to retake it in my case, but um, you know, if you can retake it, reapply next year, things will be fine. Um, I believe in you. And I started this channel to help people reach their goals. And so I could be less alone in the process, but to help people reach their goals also. <laughs> so hopefully this video was helpful to you. Um, if you want me to make more videos like this in the future, please let me know in the comments. I read all of them. Um, if I don't reply to one or two, I might've missed them. Um, so I'm really sorry, but I read, I do read all of them. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so, so much for watching. Um, if you want to see my face again, subscribe and I will see you next time.